This is Robespierre. I've reconstructed his faces to show how he'd look in real life. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more historical recreations, and let me know in the comments who you'd like to see next in real life. Maximilien Francois Marie Isidore de Robespierre was the intermediary leader between King Louis and Napoleon during the French Revolution. He was a key figure and obsessed with an ideal republic. Robespierre was born in Artois in northern France in 1758. The firstborn of five, he came from a line of notaries and lawyers. When he was eight, his mother died 12 days after giving birth to a stillborn daughter. His father was too devastated to stay and so he gave his daughters to his sister to look after and the brothers went to their maternal grandparents. Robespierre did well at school. He first attended a Catholic school and once graduated he got a scholarship to the prestigious Collège Louis le Grand. School was where he learned and became influenced by the ancient Roman Republic. Many famous Republic leaders inspired Robespierre. Ancient Rome was set up into three main sections. First came the Roman Kingdom, which was like the ancient regime, with Marie Antoinette and King Louis. Then that was overthrown by the Roman Republic, which is what Robespierre envisioned. Then after that came the Roman Empire, which was like Napoleon's vision. Something to note about Robespierre was that he was a master persuader. He actually won an award for this in 1776 when he was 18 years old. This man was like a ticking time bomb. The more he learned, the more powerful he got. In modern day terms, he would be considered a civil rights activist and his conception of power by the people and equality before the law emulated through his career. He started out studying law at France's top university. He was a top student. Then, when he graduated in 1780, he went on to get his license to practice law a year later. He was 22. His early career was pretty typical. He wrote letters and shared his opinions about the law and politics, and when there were groups that supported his views, he did not hesitate to join. This gave him momentum, and when the revolution arrived, Robespierre was all ready to support the storming of the Bastille and the march on Versailles. Robespierre wasn't your average person, screaming with a pitchfork in his hand. He was a very well-educated man. He always looked the part with his wigs, perfume, and tailored clothes, and most importantly, he could speak well. From the beginning of the revolution in 1789, Robespierre lived in a modest apartment in La Marais, which was a relatively wealthy district in Paris. He lived a bachelor life, and up until the flight to Varnes, Robespierre was actively changing policies. Though he believed in equality, a fair trial, and the dissolvement of the death penalty. All of this went out the window when there are no other quote-unquote solutions to his problems. What gave him power was his memberships in the Jacobean Club and the National Assembly. This meant that he had a voice and propelled his agenda through these venues. In 1792, France was finally a complete republic. The monarchy was no more, yet Louis was still sitting in his jail cell. So when King Louis's life was hanging on a thread, Robespierre said bluntly, The king is a guilty traitor. That's why we no longer have the monarchy. The abolishment of the monarchy shows that he is guilty. So, if we allow the king to have a trial, we are countering our own decision. This could cause a civil war and there are no other options but to proceed with his execution without trial. Furthermore, he stated that putting the king in exile would bring unhappiness to the people of the Republic. He said, if the king is on another island, he is either guilty and alive, which makes people upset, or he resembles the old way of life, which threatens the Republic. Therefore, we must erase his name and he must die so France can move forward and be done with it. On January 14, 1793, the king was unanimously voted for conspiracy and attacks upon public safety. The convention debated on a sentence, which Robespierre pushed to ensure the king's death. On the 17th, the king was executed by guillotine. After the king was beheaded, the majority of the Jacobeans wanted to continue their agenda which would eventually lead to the reign of terror, while another smaller percentage of Jacobeans wanted to stop the revolution with the king's beheading. They were called the Girondins. Long story short, the Girondins were removed and the Jacobean majority continued pushing forward. 
Robespierre was elected to the Committee of Public Safety, whose job was to protect France, both forward and domestic. Under his leadership, he basically became a dictator. At this point, as I explained in my Napoleon video, Europe was upset at France for the way it was behaving, and France felt threatened. So while externally France was fighting other countries in the coalition wars, internally France was purging itself from anyone corrupt. According to Robespierre, his thoughts were that, we are still in a revolution. And in a revolution, you must have a combination of virtue and terror. Virtue by itself is for a peaceful government, which we are not yet. Terror by itself is just destructive. So in a revolution, as long as your harm is backed up by a virtuous cause, you can do no wrong. This led to what we know as the Reign of Terror. It was from 1793 to about 1794, and during this time, anyone who was suspected of helping a possible foreign invasion or dissolvement of the Republic were enemies, and all enemies were to die. More than 50,000 suspects were killed for counter-revolutionary activities. They called it crimes against liberty. Though there were a lot of famous people dying, there were also a lot of poor people and clergy too. This escalated when the Law 22 was enacted which pretty much allowed anyone to die without trial. Your neighbor could report you today, and tomorrow you could be dead. Executions were about three a day and when the new law came in, it increased tenfold. It worked on momentum and became out of control. In June 1794, Robespierre was unanimously elected for the National Convention and became leader of the people. At this point, Robespierre was out of control. Anyone who didn't share the same views were conspirators and he branded them as such. This led to other leaders getting accused themselves of treason and so they band together and said, this is dangerous. They imprisoned Robespierre a month later in July. Robespierre tried to commit suicide he failed, shattering his jaw, and then he was put to the guillotine the next day. His followers were also executed and it put an end to the reign of terror. The Committee of Public Safety lost its power and another government body called the Directory replaced them. They were less radical and more bourgeois, however they weren't successful and this led to Napoleon staging a coup. 